As for facet drill sharpening is not a common method, I will start with an explanation of the form. The term form facet ably describes the method as it has four faces, two each side, rather than one which is the most common. The faces are also flat, unlike the common method where the face gradually becomes steeper as it moves away from the cutting edge. The easiest way of describing the form at this stage is to say it closely follows the form of an end mill, but it is more complex than that. As with an end mill, the angle directly behind the cutting edge is called the primary clearance and the steeper one the secondary clearance. I am in this video using my advanced grinding rest to illustrate the method, but my basic rest could also be used. However, the rest on its own is inadequate and a special jig is needed. This now shown on the screen. Some slides follow which show the stages in sharpening a drill, but do take particular note of the cross section at the drill's point, section AA that is. The slide now shown shows the result of grinding the secondary clearance first, this being the preferred approach. Do take note that this results in the chisel being forked. See the cross section AA. Another result of grinding the secondary clearance first is that the chisel angle is also greater than the normal 130 degrees. This can be seen on the slide compared to the conventionally sharpened drill on the left. The next stage is to grind the primary clearance, but this is much more critical than one may expect. The slide shows that with primary clearance being narrow, a large proportion of the fork chisel still exists. What is being aimed at, therefore, is for the two primary clearances to coincide as the slide now shows. However, it is acceptable for the two not to quite meet, say by 0.1 to 0.2 millimeter, but not to pass each other. The next slide shows the drill having been sharpened compared to a conventionally sharpened drill, and that the result of grinding the primary clearance is to bring the chisel angle back to being comparable to that on the conventional drill. Whilst 130 degrees is the value quoted for the chisel angle, this is not critical. I have to confess though that showing this slide embarrasses me as the result is not as I would like. I think in the hurry to get the video finished, I did not pass the secondary clearance face sufficiently over the wheel to get a perfectly flat face. Hence the curvature of the rear edge of the primary clearance. Still, that does nothing to prevent the drill working perfectly, as we will see later. It just doesn't look pretty. This slide, however, shows that a better result can be achieved with a little more care, the picture having been taken for an article I produced for the Model Engineers Workshop magazine. An important feature of the four facet form is that the chisel now has a pointed face rather than flat chisel of a normal drill. This enables the drill to start without a center punch mark, but more importantly, reduces the load that the normal chisel places on the drilling machine. 
I should have commented earlier that the draw point angle of 118 degrees is achieved by the end of the jig being used having an angle of 59 degrees. I will now start to show the actual grinding taking place, grinding the secondary angle first. This process is quite simple and largely self-explanatory. First then, I set the angle to 25 degrees and check that the fence on the rest is set at a small angle to the side of the wheel. This to ensure that grinding is done just on the corner of the wheel. Having ground one face, the drill is turned over and the second side ground. However, this differs from the first side in that the setting must remain as set for the first side to ensure that the two are ground equally. This results in there being too much to remove to use the same approach as for the first side. Because of this, the drill has to be plunged into the side of the wheel to gradually remove the bolt, then to wipe the end of the drill past the corner of the wheel as for the first side, to finish the grinding equally with that on the first side. I should add that, as I was converting a normal drill to four facet, there was more to remove than there would have been just for a resharpen. The next stage is to grind the primary clearance, with the setup being identical to that for the secondary clearance, except the angle being changed from 25 degrees to 10 degrees. The process is though more critical. As has been said earlier, the two primary clearance faces must not pass each other. To achieve this, it may be necessary to grind the first face a little on the cautious side and repeating this for the second face. Then, 
repeating the process with a very little more taken off, doing this until the two faces meet, or almost meet. With experience, you should not need to repeat more than once, perhaps not even that. I have not yet commented on the need to rotate the drill by 180 degrees between grinding each pair of faces, that is, secondary clearance faces 1 and 2, and then, similarly, the primary clearance faces 1 and 2. Whilst the angle is not critical, the more accurate, the better. Because of this, I developed the method seen throughout the video. It does of course need setting up with both ends measuring the same. You will see that I took the internal measurement using a rule, but measuring the external dimension with a caliper or micrometer would be better. With the drill now sharpened, I will try it on a piece of mild steel, I think EN1A. Note that as I said earlier, the drill starts perfectly without the need for a centre punch mark. I should also add that the drill is 13mm diameter. <laughs> 